Okay, let's go over some of the various database operations uh, that you may be performing in AccuSQL 2016. Uh, namely, I'm going to be updating an older database to AccuSQL 16 version. Uh, I'm going to show you how to create a blank database using uh, AccuSQL 2016. How to transfer a native database to SQL Server. That would be if you had an old AccuTrack database. Um, and you upgraded the software to the SQL version, I'll show you how to transfer that database to SQL Server. Um, and then I'll show you how to back up a database in SQL Server Management Studio, um, restore that back to a new database name. And that's uh, good if you want to archive your data. So for example, you take a database, back it up, uh, you can then restore it to, I don't know, 2015 archive, let's say. Um, then you can always resort back to that database, point to it if you want to run older reports. Uh, using that, then the, data, the uh, source database, you can go in and do a database delete operations. Um, and doing that, then you can delete things like students and courses. Uh, you know, and that's important if you start getting a whole bunch of, of activities or courses in there. A lot of students that you know are no longer there. Anyway, you can do a database delete operation, get rid of all that information. Um, and then that is nice because all the configuration, all the backend settings will remain intact. Okay, so what I've got here, first thing I'm going to show you um, is I've got AccuSQL 2015, the folder open here. Um, and I've got it pointing to a uh, one-stop 2015 database, okay? So that's an AccuSQL 2015 database. Okay, now I've installed AccuSQL 2016, and I just want to run a set data path just to show you what I'm talking about. So here I am pointing to this one-stop 2015 database. Okay, this database is still in 2015 format. I have not updated the database uh, to the 2016 version. Now I'm going to run it on purpose without updating the database to show you what will happen. Um, by the way, before we start, um, it's important to know if I update a database to AccuSQL 2016, then my AccuSQL 2015 clients can still point to that database. Now, of course, you'd want to install 2016 on those clients when you get a chance because so they can get the new features. However, 2015 will still continue to run with an updated 2016 database. What we cannot do, and what I'm about to show you now, is run AccuSQL 2016 against a 2015 or older database that has not been updated to version 2016. Why is that? Well, 2016 is looking for tables, columns, new additions to the database, and they won't be there until we update the database to 2016. Okay, so again, I'm in AccuSQL 2016, and I'm going to open it to a database I have not updated. This would not be recommended, but I want you to see the behavior. So the program opens. I log in. And I immediately start getting errors. OK, so what we're seeing here, it's looking for an object name, GRPAL, that does not exist. Well, the reason it doesn't exist is we have not run the data updater to get it uh, to the new 2016 format. So I'm just going to cancel out. I know this is not going to run, and I'm out. So now let's go ahead and update that database to version 2016, and then we'll open it again. Now, how do we do that? In the folder where AccuSQL 2016 is installed, you're looking for a program called sqldataupdater.exe. Okay, when you find that, just double click on it. You'll need to put in your SQL Server connection information, and you must run this with SA credentials in order to have the permissions we need to alter the database. And you can use SQL Server or Windows Authentication. Typically, it'd be SQL Server Authentication. Now, from the drop-down box, and it take, may take a minute or so to populate, I'm going to go ahead and click that drop-down box and see which databases I have out there on that SQL Server instance. And I'm looking for my one-stop 2015. Okay, so I'm selecting that database, and now I click Update. Okay, it may take a minute or so. It's adding all the new tables, the new triggers, the new columns, et cetera, to that database. I've updated it. Now I'm going to go right back and open my AccuSQL 2016 and log back in with my same credentials.
And now you can see I have an in, in AccuSQL that's opened happily, everything's fine. Okay, so if you get an error message when you're opening that SQL Server database, long story short, make sure you run that SQL data updater.exe from the AccuSQL 2016 folder with SA permissions. It adds what we need for the 2016 version and then you'll be good to go. All right, next thing I'm going to do is create a blank database. So I can do that very easily in my SQL Server. So database, create blank uh, SQL DB. I click on that, put in my server information again. And I want to use my SA credentials again here. I can test my connection. Okay, that's happy. Now I'm going to call the database something. Advising 2016. Okay. Now here, by the way, I can create a public account for that uh, to log in. So obviously you don't want your clients to log in with SA credentials. Um, so I can just create a public account right at this time. And I'll just give the password the same as the ID. You get one chance at the password and it's case sensitive. So be careful with that. Um, again, if I want to, I can test get my connection. And now I'm going to create the blank data. So it'll run off and do that. It'll create the database name. It'll add the tables to it, the structure, et cetera. So now it's creating that database in my SQL Server. Once that's done, then I can immediately, if I'd like to, go to database location and go pick that database and save and exit completely. And now when I reopen AccuSQL 2016, it will be pointing to that brand new blank database that I just created. And I can go look, it's a blank database, so I know I won't have anything in it. So now I've got a brand new blank database that I can work with. I could do my imports, uh, get it ready for use. Okay, so that's how you create a blank database. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is transfer a native database to SQL Server. Now, what do I mean by native database? That would be if you'd been using AccuTrack in the past, uh, some version of AccuTrack, what we can do is take that AccuTrack database, if you upgrade to the SQL Server version, we can transfer that AccuTrack database directly into SQL Server. Okay, I do that here by transfer DB to SQL. And at the top here, I have the native path to transfer. So what I would do is go pick uh, the database that I want to transfer, the native database that I want to transfer over to SQL Server. Okay, it might be out on your share somewhere. You can copy that folder, uh, the AccuData folder typically locally, but we just need to get to the source database that we want to update. Okay, now I'm okay with just doing a tutoring sample here. And again, put in my SQL Server SA uh, permissions. And I can call this database whatever I'd like. So tutor db, let's just say. Create a public if I want to. Test my connection. And then click transfer data. So it's going to take that source native database tutoring sample, in this case, yours would probably say AccuData, and now it's going to uh, create the database, create all the tables, and also put all of the data into the tables that existed from the native database, the AccuTrack database. So you can see I've got uh, some 2,400, almost 2,500 in my logbook, my sign-in table. So um, I do have existing data there. Okay, now that's complete. Again, if I'd like to, I can go right to my database location and then go pick that database that I just transferred over, which was TutorDB, save that, and it'll tell me I need to exit completely, no problem. I go back into my AccuSQL 2016, and now I'm pointing to the native database that I just transferred over to SQL Server. And I should have my sample data in there to prove that indeed it was the uh, 
tutoring sample database that I just transferred. And there we go with my fake students, my courses. So just like it was when it was running in AccuTrack, it's transferred all of the data directly over to my SQL Server. All right, the final thing I want to show you here is to do a backup and restore operation in SQL Server Management Studio. Uh, let's say we have a database that we've been using for a long time. Uh, it's gathered lots of activities, lots of students that are no longer there, a lot of data that we know we'll never really use. We're just kind of uh, oh, excess uh, old records. At some point in time, you may experience slowness uh, when your activity list grows too large. And I just mean right here, you may have tons of categories, maybe repeats uh, per semester, you know, lots and lots of courses. So that potentially can slow the system down. At some point in time, I would recommend you back up that database, archive it. What we do is back it up, restore it to a new name, and then the, I'll show you how you can use the source database then to do database delete operations. Now that's a nice thing because now we have the archive of the database just like it is. We can always point back to it. We have the uh, original database, the source database, that we then go do database delete operations. We can get rid of whatever we want, like students, activities, uh, courses, tutors, anything we want to dump out of that database. Um, but the good thing about that is all of our back-end configuration, all of the things that the users have done to set up the back-end control panel settings are going to remain intact just like they were. Okay? So let's do that real quick. I'll open, uh, I think I've got SQL Server Management open here. And here's a list of my databases. So let's just pick a database. We'll do our One Stop 2015, let's say. So I'm going to right-click on that database, go to Tasks, and then do a backup. Okay, and then I've got to go find the folder that I want to put that in. So I'll add that. And I'll call it One Stop dot BAK. Okay, and again, I want to do database backup. I want a backup type full. I'll do OK. So now it's backing up that database. Okay, and I'm done. So the next thing I'll do is go to databases here, and then I can do restore database. I'll go find, uh, well, I put the name I want, one stop archive, let's say, from device. <laughs> And I'll go find that folder that I just saved it in. And I call that one stop back. So I'll select that. Do OK. Click Restore. OK. And now it's restored that database. Now I might have to right click and do a refresh here to see that. But you can see now I have one stop 2015, one stop archive. Okay, so what's the next thing? I've got one stop archive. I can always point back to that database to get a, uh, the information that I have in it at the time it was backed up and restored. But let's say the new semester started and now I want to dump the data out of one stop 2015. Okay, so let's go make sure our database is set to one stop 2015. And by the way, it goes without saying that you better check your backup. I would definitely recommend you connect to that archive, that backup database, to make sure it's perfectly happy uh, running that database before you, and even maybe get a secondary backup before you start doing any kind of database delete operation. But now I've got this database. This is the uh, original database that I backed up from, and I'll open back up to that. go to database location just to verify indeed I'm on that database I am. Again, if I was doing it properly, I would go connect to that archive database um, and make sure everything's happy logging into that before I do it anything at all on deleting data from this database. But we'll assume that I've already done that. So now I go to database, delete, and then I can pick any of the information that I'd like to delete out of the database. Okay, so let's say that my, and again, we can go look before we do this. I've got lots of students in there. Um, I've got 
lots of categories or quite a few categories and activities. And again, if I'm going to do this, well, the, I better have an import file ready, you know, so I can import the new students, I can import the courses. So I want that import file because I'll be uh, doing database imports to get the data back in. Anyway, I go pick delete. And let's say I want to get rid of my course information and my student information, for example. So I can just scroll down here. And if it's student information, I would recommend you just pick everything student. So if it starts with students, delete it. And then I can go up to categories here. And I've got categories, activities, remove. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of my activities out of here. Now, I've got also another activities that talks about activity assignments, waiting in line. So I could pick that, too. And, of course, I want to delete my student registration, which is already selected, I believe. It says uh, student to activity assignments right here. That's my registration. Okay. Now, if you're not sure about what you're deleting, please, please call me here, and I will be more than happy to go through this with you because the last thing on earth we want to do is lose data. But anyway, here I'm going to do delete selected. It'll delete the data out and also remove any potential orphan records. So it'll clean itself to make sure that the data is, the integrity is there. Okay, now that process is complete. I can now close this screen and let's go look at the results here. So now I don't have anything student whatsoever and I won't have any categories or activities either. Okay, so I've just... Uh, wipe my database. Now I'm ready to start fresh and do my imports. Okay, and if you have any questions uh, with any of these operations, please call us here or talk to me, David, and I'll be happy to explain any of this further.